And here I was thinking I had it all nutted out. Well, I stuffed up. Five, four, three, two, one. Is go. <laughs> G'day and welcome back to the channel today. We're going to put the pedal assembly back in, get the clutch working and start looking at the brakes. So for safety reasons I've decided to go for a dual circuit master cylinder which I don't have in stock. I have a couple of singles. I was going to use that but I've decided to just upgrade it. Obvious reasons. Um, so that's not here yet. There's one on order, but today we can definitely put the pedals in, get the clutch working, so let's go. I think I was all clever and stuff. So I've made up my linkage and everything's connected. I'm going, why can't I push that pedal down? And guess what? It works in reverse. Why would it work in reverse? So when I push down on there, nothing happens. So I've adjusted it right back out. And when I do it that way, I'm engaging the clutch. So what I have to do now is make up another linkage to transfer it from a pull to a push <sighs> stand by right oh let me show you what I've been working on um, I spent a lot of time thinking about this and I've welded on a bracket here that's threaded with a bolt these two are independent at the moment it was part of something else and um, I've just modified it, I don't know what it was. Um, but I'm keeping these two independent. I will weld them two together once I get the right angle. But at the moment, if you look at the bottom shaft there when I raise the pedal, I have a pedal there and now this will then push, because it's pushing backwards that way, this will then push down to this guy here. So next job is to make a rod to connect to that and then once I get the angle right where everything's going to work smoothly I can adjust the length of this and then I can weld this in place and I'll have a working clutch, fingers crossed. Righto, show you what I've done. She's all in there, linkage works, pushes forward, push down, I've got clutch. So. Sometimes you just got to adapt. You're going to have problems, and it's not going to be the last problem I have. I can tell you that right now. You just got to adapt and get on with it. So I'll finish doing all this up, make it all pretty, a bit of lock tight here and there, and a couple of nuts and washers and stuff, and she'll be done. There you go. I even got a return spring on there now too. Beautiful. Well, that little clutch system took me all day. Put it together. Wrong. I had to undo all that work and then redo it. Didn't take all day, took all afternoon, but I'm done for the day. Um, it's not the end of the video though. I will tag this onto doing the brakes. So when the brake master cylinder shows up, we'll head back onto this one and we'll finish off those pedals. Righto, it's a number of days later and my master cylinder has arrived. So we can continue working on these brakes. Um, I have mounted it up the Brake pedal clutch assembly came with push rods and and uh, rose joints and stuff. So push rods in. It's just sitting there. Nothing's bolted in hard yet. But I have brake pedal there. So now I've got to work out my brake lines. And I had a, I've had a rummage and I have managed to salvage a couple of fittings. So that's for the front brake. It's quite large. 
and then that's for the rear brake which is a little bit smaller but quite large most fittings are in comparison that size um, but the fittings that I've been using on the early Ford stuff is different again so it's a bit of a mumbo jumbo but we'll sort it out but one thing I didn't do was film me unfreezing these because these were locked on hard now I'm obviously not using that line I'm going to make new lines but I'm using this fitting which I have unfrozen um, but I have a frozen one here so we'll go up to the vice and I'll show you how to unfreeze these because they're worth hanging on to righto so more than often you'll have these things seized on and that's rusted hard okay um, if you try and turn that it's going to snap your line and if you want to save your lines or if you want to save your ends you don't want it to shear off so I'll show you how you do it stick it in a vise and if it's got a bend in it I'd like to use that as a bit of a leverage so we'll put it in that way now to show you that this is locked up like I can't like I'm that's turning the actual um, brake pipe so what we do we use heat so a little bit of science with Pauli what happens when you heat metal it expands so we want that outer to expand and it will free up the rust and whatever else is in there holding it together and it should loosen off pretty easily and I've got some WD-40 uh, at hand as well gentle but that's already starting to turn I don't know if you can see that and that's all you need for the heat that's starting to loosen right up turn the heat off and hit it with some WD You're gonna smoke a bit but as it cools down it'll, it'll just start letting it in and there you go unstuck And the more you work it, the looser it's going to get. But anyway, I don't need this one for now, but I just wanted to show you how I did the other ones. Because you might get stuck like a lot of people do with these things that don't undo, especially on old cars. So on a side note, I've um, cut some holes in my radiator so I can have the extra fittings. And um, hopefully my mate can sort that out for me and we'll have a V8 or side valve V8 radiator for very cheap. Now... One thing I'm not going to show you how to do is make brake lines because brakes, if they're not done right, they can be very, well, they are very dangerous. I'm a qualified mechanic, I've done them for years. Um, I would recommend you get your brake lines professionally made. Um, I've got the tools, I'm going to start making them up now and I'll get back to you when they're ready. You can start plumbing it up, we'll start bleeding the master cylinder. I can show you how to do that, bleed the brakes, and hopefully we have a good pedal. And this thing's going to stop when we need it to. Righto, we have a nice double flare there, and that's the last one I needed to do. So let's um, get this brake line in, hey? Righto, let's bleed these bad boys. First thing you've got to do, if you haven't done this before, when you get a brand new master cylinder, you have to bleed it. Because at the moment, there's air in that master cylinder, and you need to get the air out of it. Fill it up. And all you do, you have your brake lines off and you put your fingers over the outlets. So 
I'm going to put my fingers over the outlets and when you push down you can let your fingers off but when you're coming back up you close it so you seal them off and it helps draw the fluid down same thing so you're pushing the air out and then you close it I'm already starting to feel fluid coming out of the, the back one front one's just starting now. There goes the front. So we've got fluid. All the air's out of it now. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to fill it right back up again because it's going to drain a bit. We don't want to get air back in there. Now I'm just going to connect my pipes. Some spanners. Got my radiator back last night. How good. I knew it could be done. Excellent. Bleeding your brakes on your own isn't difficult. I'll use an old brake fluid container with a hole in the top and a little bit of vacuum hose. And while ever there's positive pressure, so if you put your if you put your hose angle higher than the actual nipple, you'll always have a little bit of positive pressure, a little bit of fluid in there. So so what happens when you Put your, when you crack this, put your um, foot on the pedal and then you lift your pedal back up, it sucks it back in, so it sucks air back in. So you want this just to be a little bit higher. So I'm just going to jam that in here somehow, somewhere. I'll put this spanner on. And the fluid coming out is going to sit in that line. So there's going to be that much fluid. So as I pump it, it's going to be drawing backwards and forwards and I won't be using all that. So I'll be able to bleed it properly. So we want to get all the air out. I'm not going to be able to um, tell when the air's out, but I'm just going to give it a good going over. Well, let me turn this spanner around. Give it a good flush, and it's pretty much the same all the way around. So let's go. We can hear that. up and do the other side so from this angle you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing so first I'm just going to crack this put my bleeder on sit it up there You 
want to be checking to make sure that we don't run out of fluid. done. I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the process on the front and the brakes are done. And we have brakes. I don't know if you can hear, if you listen you'll hear the brake shoes moving in and out with the springs and stuff. The brakes need adjusting. You can hear them in the front and the back and that's a good hard solid pedal so we're done. I want to drive this thing so bad. We're so close. So anyway, clutch is sorted, brakes are sorted, next video is get this engine running and um, I've already been working on that so you'll see that video coming up, but it's close to being a driving chassis and with the cab on it, it's finished. So really all I've got to do, and that's the big job, is finish welding up that cab. I have been doing bits and pieces to it. Um, do the cab, there's going to be a fair bit of sanding and bog work in that one but it is what it is and I can't wait to paint it, bolt this on, wire it up, take it for a spin. So we're not far off, we are really close. But anyway, that's it from me. Stay tuned, be good to your mates, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.